A few days ago I published a video about the different color modes of the DJI R2S, which are the same as the Mavic 2 Pro. Several of you asked about my post-processing workflow. This video will be the first one of a short series where I will show the basic of color correcting and color grading drone footage. This one will concentrate on correcting luminosity and contrast and I will introduce LUTs. At the end of this video I will add a link to the other ones of the series as soon as they will be published. If you enjoyed the video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Let's get going. For this tutorial I will be using Lumetri Color in Premiere Pro. It is very simple and resembles the basic panel of Lightroom, which is very familiar to many users. It is the same interface used in After Effects and very similar to most other video editors. So the technique shown here can easily be used in most other programs. To evaluate luminosity, contrast, saturation and white balance of the footage, I will use scopes, which represent the value of the image in a similar way to histogram, used for still image, although in a dynamic and more elaborate way. When dealing with 10-bit color modes and flat profiles, like D-Log or HLG, LUTs are often used. LUT stands for Lookup Table. A LUT holds a series of defined data in numbers used to transform color input values from your camera to different color output values to give your final footage a different look or feel. In other words, a LUT contains preset color looks for video footage that can help to speed up the editing process and increase creativity. In this tutorial I will keep things very simple and concentrate on correcting luminosity and contrast. I also will introduce the use of LUTs. I will add another one about color grading by adjusting white balance and saturation and modifying individual colors. Another video will be about dynamic adjustment using keyframe. And another one about local adjustments using masks. The first thing to correct is the exposure of the image, if it is too dark or too bright. Scopes are very useful here, it is possible to choose among several visual representations. For this tutorial I will use the parade for evaluating luminosity and contrast. In a further video I will also use the vector scope for saturation and white balance. This image is correctly exposed. The darkest part can touch the zero value, while I prefer to keep the highest part representing the highlight below 90, possibly around 80. This other clip is a bit underexposed. There is a good amount of space on the upper part of the scope, while the deeper shadows are well below zero. The image benefits from raising the exposure value by almost a full stop at least in the first part, when the camera is facing down. This is a typical situation where a dynamic adjustment using keyframe would be very useful, as there is a change in luminosity during the clip, when the camera tilts up and the sky is framed. In most cases, underexposing a bit is not an issue, as the shadows can generally be recovered while editing. The opposite has to be avoided. In this case, the image is overexposed and the bar of the scope are over the safety value of 80. The highlights are partly burned and there is nothing we can do to recover them. Even if we lower the exposure or the highlights, there is simply no information in that area. This is why overexposing is always to be avoided. When in doubt, it's much better to err on the underexposed side. In Lumetri Color Basic Panel there is a slider for contrast, but I rarely use it, as it is quite limited in range and we don't have much control on how the contrast is applied. But this slider is useful to give a basic idea of how contrast works. 
As we increase contrast by sliding it to the right, we can see that the values for luminosity are pushed toward the edges of the scope, spreading as much as possible to fill the entire area. If we reduce contrast by sliding to the left, the values bunch up more and more toward the center, leaving empty spaces at the top and the bottom. Scopes are again very useful to analyze the contrast of an image. A clip with a correct amount of contrast has values spread across the whole area and reaching close to both edges, at 0 and 80. Let's start with this clip taken with an Air 2S in normal mode. While normal mode with the Mini 2 or the Mavic Air 2 is practically ready to use just out of the sensor, with the Air 2S the footage lacks a bit of contrast and saturation and needs just a little care. First of all, this image is just a bit overexposed, so let's start by lowering exposure until the upper value does not exceed 80. There are several ways to increase contrast. Keeping an eye on the scope, we want the black point to extend slightly below the zero value. So we start by lowering the black point. We can see that the shadows are a bit disconnected now from the blacks, as there is a bit of empty space in between. So we lower the shadows until the lower half of the scope is evenly spread. Then we lift the white point until somewhere just below 80. With the highlight we must be careful to remain below this value. Then we can increase the highlight slightly and play around with the two values of white and highlights to find a good balance below 80. Another method is to use curves by drawing an S shape. First we set the point in the middle of the curve so that the value will remain the same and will not be affected by other changes. Then we set the point in the middle of the lower half to lower the shadows and another one in the upper part to increase the highlights. Notice that when increasing contrast, the image also gains slightly in saturation. A less common but often useful way to add contrast is by using blend modes. Let's go back to the same clip after lowering the exposure. We make a copy by using Ctrl plus C to copy and Ctrl plus V to paste it. Let's put an image on top of the other. Now we select the clip on the top. Go to Effect Controls and to the scroll down menu for blend modes. The fourth group from the top, the one starting with Overlay, is the one for contrast. We can choose one of the top five modes for different results. Soft light is the well-behaved one and we can generally use it at 100% opacity. The other modes are much more aggressive, but by lowering the opacity we can obtain very interesting results. I suggest experimenting with this method as in some situations is an excellent way to reach the result we are after. An ungraded D-log image has very low contrast, so the values will be bunched up towards the middle of the scope, with a good deal of empty space above 0 and below 80, and in fact this image looks really washed out. Even after correcting the luminosity and the contrast, using the different method above, the image looks still very dull. The best way to give life to a D-Log clip is to use LUTs, and with this color profile I use them all the time. There are plenty of LUTs available either for free or for sale. I use SkyGrade. There is a set made specifically for the R2S. You will find a link in the description. Matt Harris is the author of these slots and has a very good YouTube channel named The Film Poet. I am not affiliated in any way. Using Lumetricolor in Premiere Pro or After Effects, it is possible to insert the lot in the basic panel or in the creative one. I suggest using creative as it allows to modify the percentage of the lot applied, and this is often crucial. 
The script was shot in the log and the light condition was horrible. Very damp, hot and wet. It is going to be very hard to get any structure in the sky, but we can certainly improve the image. So we go to the creative panel and in the scroll down menu, look, at the top of the panel, we navigate the hard drive to find the LUT and I choose sky grade cinema pop, which adds a good contrast and punch to the images. As you can see there is already a big difference and the image starts to slowly come back to life. It is a good deal overexposed, so we can lower the exposure by at least one stop. Things are getting better, but the colors are still a bit weak and we could do with a little extra contrast. We can increase the percentage value of the LUT up to, let's say, 130%. And the image now starts to pop up and we can fine adjust the shadows, highlights and exposure. I will come back to LUTs much more in depth in the next video of this series, which will be about color grading by adjusting white balance and saturation and modifying individual colors. Click on this link if you want to go deeper in the different color modes of the Air 2S and the Mavic 2 Pro, normal, D-Log and HLG. I will also add a link to my upcoming videos about editing drone footage as soon as they will be published. See you soon.